Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Trudy and I am a channeler of the Ra Collective, Archangels and Others. Continuation of the life story of my mother. Chapter 23, A Kind Doctor. In 1957, I worked as a translator for Dr. Cooper. He was an American doctor from Albany, New York. He was a tall man, over six feet tall, very thin, and had very little hair. When he came to Kanawi, everybody wondered who this man was. Some people thought he was from a church. Later, we found out that he came alone. In a small village like Kanawi, we did not have a doctor. All we had was a dresser who worked in the government dispensary, a little clinic. We had a small hospital in the Catholic mission. It was called St. Joseph's Hospital and had 20 beds. Three nuns ran the hospital. They were not doctors, only trained nurses. They were Mother Jerome, a big sized person, Sister Otran, a thin, tall person, and Sister Joseph, also a big sized person. That was where Dr. Cooper came to work. Sister Otran was trained in London. She told me she worked in London in a hospital with about four to five hundred beds. She was quite a good nurse. One early morning, a boat came to the hospital jetty. Several people carried a woman to the hospital. She had given birth at midnight, but the placenta wouldn't come out. Sister Otran took out the placenta in four minutes. Everyone was very happy because the Chinese believe that if the placenta did not come out, it will go up the body of the woman to catch her heart. This is because the placenta was looking for the baby. The person would die. Sister Joseph was a trained midwife and nurse. She often helped in the maternity ward. This nurse worked 20 hours a day. Some nights when there were many pregnant women, this nurse did not sleep the whole night. They also had to look after the sick in the hospital. Many native Ibans and Chinese stayed in the hospital. Mother Jerome was an experienced nurse. She had worked in the hospital since she came to Sarawak. One morning, she was in church. There was a loud noise. Mother Jerome had fallen down with her prayer book and rosary because she had fallen asleep. We had seen her asleep in church before, but this was the first time she had fallen down. They did not have enough sleep, this nurse. Dr. Cooper was our only doctor. He was a kind man. He charged his patients very little money. Adults paid a dollar fifty and children only one dollar. He bought his own medicine and had a different way of treating the sick. One day, an old grandmother came in with her grandson, a little boy with very high fever. The doctor put the child in a tank of cold rain water. The grandmother was so shocked she wept. She asked me how could he put a high fever person in cold water. An hour later, the child was feeling better. Everybody was surprised. The Chinese believe that a person with high fever should be wrapped in thick clothes or in a blanket. They would never put a sick boy in cold water. For many days, everybody in town talked about the strange doctor. After this, more people came to see Dr. Cooper. One man called Mo Peng or Pop Mark Face because he had scars on his face, came to see him with sores on his body. Dr. Cooper checked him and told him to come the next morning. 
He told Mo Peng to wash himself clean before he came. The next day, the man came to the hospital. Dr. Cooper rubbed Mo Peng's body with an ointment. After several treatments, Mo Peng was cured, no more souls. Mo Peng never forgot this. He told everyone about the miraculous ointment and the good doctor. Besides Mo Peng, Dr. Cooper helped and cured many people. He had many outpatients. They all came to see him, Chinese, Ebans, and Malays. In the evenings, Dr. Cooper would walk the streets by himself. He always walked to the Malay Kampong or village. One night, the doctor went for a walk. It was late and dark. Where did he go? He went to a nearby cemetery. There was a shed in the cemetery. He rested in the shed and came out of the cemetery. A man saw him coming out of the cemetery. The man thought he had seen a ghost. The man ran to a nearby house. He was trembling. He shouted, Oh, I am very afraid. I just saw a ghost, a tall ghost. The owner of the house was curious. Where is the ghost? He asked. He walked out to the road. There he saw a tall man walking down the road. It was only Dr. Cooper. After the evening walk, Dr. Cooper would go to a coffee shop. He always sat by himself and drank beer. Many small children gathered in front of the coffee shop. They called out to him, Ting Hao Ting Hao. That was the doctor's nickname. Ting means top, Hao means good. Top good or very good. Sometimes he walked down the streets with the children. They held his hands when he walked with them. He was the Pipe Piper of Kanawi. I was his translator when he was in Kanawi because I spoke English, Malay, Iban, and several Chinese dialects. Sometimes there were not many sick people in the hospital. He talked to me then. Once I asked him how he came to an unknown place like Kanawi, he answered, well, I read about Sarawak in a magazine one day. I knew I must come and help here. He had gone first to Kapi, which was a bigger town upriver. There he saw a big and nice hospital with nurses and doctors. He said to himself, they don't need me here. That was how he came to Kanawe. I was curious. I asked him, are you married? He answered, I was married, but my wife always complained, so she left me. One day, he told me, I am worried for myself. What will I do if I ever become half paralyzed? I hope when I die, I will die very quickly. I told him, don't worry, doctor. The good God will grant you your wish as you have done many good works. The good God did give him his wish. One Monday morning, I went to work as usual. Dr. Cooper was not well. He was in a very bad mood. He said in a very loud voice, Any more sick people? I answered, yes. Then he said, send them in quickly. I thought to myself, how can I send them all in? At 12 noon, he finished examining the sick. Then he walked out of the room. Mother Jerome was already in the doorway. Mother Jerome knew the doctor was not well. He asked two Iban men to help her. Together, they accompanied the doctor to his little house, not far away from the hospital. He became sick on Monday. On Tuesday, he got worse. On Wednesday, the parish priest, Father Brueggemann, asked him to go to Cebu for treatment. Dr. Cooper refused to go, but the priest forced him. By Thursday, he was unconscious. He died on Friday. This was the death he hoped for. The good God had granted him his wish. When the Kanawi people heard of his death, they prepared a grand funeral for him. They hired a band. 
When the coffin reached the Kanawit Jetty, Mopeng was the first one to go to the coffin to help carry it. The long procession went to the church compound where he was buried with the priests and nuns. The good helping doctor was at last led to rest in 1959. After he died, many medicine arrived. The nuns did not know what they were for, so they threw them into the river. A few weeks later, his twin brother came to Kanawe in the hospital's long boat. I thought I saw a ghost. The twin brother looked exactly like the dead doctor. He visited the hospital where his brother worked and the cemetery where his brother was led to rest. When he saw the photos of the funeral procession, he was very touched. The brother went home to USA. Shortly after that, there was a letter from the United States. He had sent money to the nuns to build a proper maternity ward. The ward is still there today with a picture of the good doctor above the entrance. After Dr. Cooper died in 1959, I started a little business selling saw timber. I did not make much money. Moreover, the work was too hard for a woman. So ends chapter 23. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this, be sure to check out my other videos. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.